As a garden designer, there are two things my clients often say to me. One, they say I don't have the space for a garden. And secondly, they say I just can't grow anything in my garden. Well, to that, I say absolute nonsense. Even if you have both these problems, I'm going to prove you can have a lovely, lush garden. And this inner city courtyard has both those problems. It is tiny and nothing is growing because there's one, two, three, four, five trees providing a canopy so nothing seems to thrive. I am still confident, though, that we can turn this into something special. First step is the clear out, and this problem you see quite a lot. Plants like this Indian hawthorn snow maiden, they get bought at the nursery because they look nice, but they're not suited to a low light condition. Things like this crash, that they also like a lot more sun, but with this, we can propagate it and move it on. When it comes to small space gardening, privacy is key because you want your garden to feel like a sanctuary. Here, we've got a wall on our back boundary and it's quite low, the neighbors can see straight in. So I'm gonna be building a screen, doesn't need to be too high, just to the top of this fence and across. Now, I don't wanna hide this wall because it's got this fantastic texture and age that you just can't buy. First things first though, I need a couple of posts in the ground. constructed a really simple treated pine frame which I've painted black to match our posts. Now you'll notice I've got one of these up on edge to give it some strength through the guts. That way I don't need to put a second post in. Once I've screwed this off, I can get the screening boards on. For our screening, I've selected a spotted gum decking board. Now I went for spotted gum over Merbau because it's got much more grain in it and that's going to sit better with the texture of our wall. And now I'm just going to apply a really simple water-based stain. This one is also coloured in spotted gum. It's just going to enhance the grain even more and help to protect the timber. We don't need no money. When it comes to making a small space feel bigger, I love to use mirrors. They reflect light around and they just make a space feel so much larger than it actually is. This one is acrylic. It's flexible, so it won't break, and it's inexpensive as well. But because it's flexible, it needs to be perfectly flat so it doesn't tend to look like something from Luna Park. It can make even a skinny man look quite large. So to keep it nice and still, I'm going to be using a frame, and I'm just using a palm trimmer which means I can take a little bit off each edge and it will sit nice and flat. Quick coat of black paint and then we can get our mirrors in. When you're working with an acrylic mirror, it's really important to remember you treat it exactly like a normal glass mirror would, and that's why we're using a specific silicon for it. Now, I'm going to run a bead all the way around the outside. That's going to waterproof it and help stick it in place. I'm then going to put a backing board on, which we can screw in place to keep it all nice and tight. <laughs> These are the finished mirrors, looking rather snazzy, if I do say so myself. Now, you'll notice, put a couple of eyelets and some stainless wire on the back, and then there's just a simple screw on the wall, and I can hang it up easily. And I've got four of these going on the wall, and the idea is not to be looking at yourself. You want lots of planting in front of them, and that way it will give the visual effect that the garden is much bigger in that direction. <laughs> Thank you.
Having a vertical garden is a fantastic way to save on space. But if you were to get a professional one done, they can cost up to 1,500 bucks a square meter. Here, we've just got simple hanging baskets on the wall. I've sprayed them black to give them a contemporary look, and I'm planting them up with shade-loving plants like this adiantum. And then I'm going to use this other type of bird's nest fern, which has got a leaf, a hmm, little bit like a lasagna. <laughs> This garden is actually really easy to plant up because it's lovely, even, dappled shade. There's no hot spots, so all the plants can be the same. As a rule of thumb, when you're picking shady plants, you want those with large, soft leaves. If you've got a sunny spot, smaller, harder ones will work better. Now, this garden has got some weight on one side with the neighbor's monstera and the frangipani when it comes back into leaf. So to balance that off, I've used these amazing cordyline negras. Now, these will get to the height of the fence, and they've just got this fantastic purple foliage. If you've got a small garden where nothing grows, hopefully you now feel armed to turn it into something as spectacular as this. If I've got one piece of advice, it's don't be afraid of plants. The more you can get in, the bigger the space will look. Just make sure they're suited to your conditions. And remember, it's not about the size, it's what you do with it that counts. Ah, I normally leave those for my wife. So